Hello and welcome to Ephraim Talk Show. Our guest today is Udit Sharma, Chief Revenue Officer, Share Chat. Welcome to the show, Udit. Thanks, Kanchan. Thanks, Ephraim, for having me for this uh, discussion. Udit, Share Chat always remains in the news for right or wrong reasons. How do you, how does it feel, you know, being at the hem of India's largest homegrown social media platform? Uh, Kanjan, actually, uh, I would think anything that's worth the news will always remain in news for right or wrong reasons. But, uh, you know, just to answer your question, it's it's really super exciting times for a platform like ShareChat and Moj, right? Um, what we are seeing is there are two underlying currents in our society right now, right? One is the emergence of new internet users in tier two, tier three towns of this country. These are people who are coming into internet for the very first time and not so hellbent on actually using English as the as the uh, preferred language, right? They are more comfortable using their own mother tongue, uh, but they definitely want to take full advantage of what internet has to offer. So, so that's one underlying current that, that we are seeing right now. And thankfully, ShareChat is rightly placed to sort of tap into that behavior and take advantage of that and be able to offer a platform that actually speaks the language that people are comfortable in. And that's why, you know, 160 million people are actually coming onto the platform month after month and engaging with it. On the other side, you know, the second thing that's happening is the emergence of short form video, right? So uh, report after report, you know, you will see so many industry reports coming out these days talking about how the younger population of this country uh, for I don't know if it's a good thing, but the attention span has actually gone down significantly, right? The, depending on which report you're reading, it's running into a few seconds now, right? They they claim that it's gone down to like 10 to 12 seconds. What is happening because of that is people actually have um, higher propensity to spend time on platforms, which can give them very engaging, authentic, short form video content, right? And that's something that, that Moj is really uh, uh, at the forefront of. And that's why, you know, from both ShareChat and Moj pers perspective, I feel totally privileged to be actually part of an ecosystem, which is tapping into those two sort of emerging, emerging consumer behaviors in the country right now. Yeah. Well, you're going to complete one year soon, uh, right, at, at ShareChat. So if I ask about your major challenges and achievements so far. So... Uh, you know, when I, uh, prior to this, I was actually in the OTT world, uh, which was a lot more organized, well-established, right? I think advertisers, agencies, uh, over the last five, six years, they have started understanding the value that that OTT platforms bring to the table. Short form video is still an emerging narrative in our country, right? And and that was one of the things that got me excited in first place about joining ShareChat and Moj. Uh so for me, I think one of the biggest challenges has been to, to actually go out in the market and talk to uh, marketeers, brand managers, category managers, industry leaders, and, and help them understand the power of short form video in our country today, right? So that has been uh, a big challenge and that has been the most exciting part as well. Similarly, you would actually hear a lot of brands talking about, you know, how tier two, tier three markets are the next big growth opportunities for them. And for us, because a big chunk of our share chat audiences are actually coming from those cities, those towns, uh, again, talking to the same advertisers and telling them that, hey, if you're looking to, you know, talk about a coconut oil in in, in tier two, tier three town, then, then you need to be working with us. And you need to be understanding the, uh, the nuances of you know, what kind of content those people are watching, what gets them excited, what are they interested in, uh, bring about the contextual nature, right? Bring about uh, the fact that they are actually celebrating a Chhat Puja or they're they are celebrating a, a Ram Navmi, right? Talk about those festivals. So bringing in those nuances and working with brands, I think those have been the more uh, interesting challenges that I have seen. In terms of uh, achievements, uh, you know, we actually just clogged our largest ever revenue month in the history of Chair Chat and Moj. So that's something that any revenue leader will take a lot of pride in. But, you know, just moving beyond numbers, establishing a well-oiled sales machinery uh, has been something that I've worked on for the last uh, nine months or so that I've been here at Chair Chat. So now we have a, a, a very 
seasoned group of sales folks who are who are basically you know taking the share chat and moj narrative out in the market uh, so i would consider that as as one of the big achievements apart from you know some of the revenue goals that we have hit in the in the last few months yeah congratulations on on your revenue uh, you know achievements uh, but rundit i would like you to share uh, you know that achievement i mean in in detail i mean what was the revenue and for which month you are talking about uh, for our audience and number two i mean you mentioned about tier 2 and tier 3 cities so are you also going to focus metro cities uh, urban urban area in in your next phase of growth sure uh to answer your first question uh march was actually that month uh so uh, so very recent and uh just to just to put in the context in march we actually uh did 2x of what we actually did in june of 22 so you can imagine the the growth that we have seen right uh as for your other question about what about metros what about tier 1 so i want to actually call this out right a lot of times uh because we have done i would think that we have done a pretty good job of establishing share chat as the market leader in tier 2 and tier 3 people actually tend to forget that tier 1 in india itself is sort of subdivided into several categories right so even in tier 1 in absolute terms if you were to look at the traffic that we get that we get from tier 1 on share chat that's about a good 40 45 odd million people every month right and and this is something that we are again going and and talking to a lot of advertisers about that hey you know as long as you're thinking of vernaculars as long as you're thinking of talking to people in tamil telugu malayalam bhojpuri rajasthani punjabi uh don't just think of this as a tier 2 tier 3 play you have to think of this as a tier 1 play as well right because there is a sizable population in in tier 1 towns in metros that's actually more comfortable using their native language and in order for you to reach out to them uh, share chat is a is a tremendous platform for for doing that so that's why tier one narrative from a share chat perspective is also quite strong and moj by the way is a totally different story right moj is a more gen z platform uh, which even today gets 45% of the overall traffic from tier one so so pretty sizable traffic actually comes on the platform from tier one itself so did you know if i talk about in the short video market segment so i think we have got you know lot many players and um, uh, the 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 fight could be tough because you know after the entry of global players i mean who launched their instagram maybe youtube short so they are also you know maybe eating up uh, into into the space so how challenging is to to sustain in this market kanchan i am personally a strong believer of uh, uh, you know the fact that the more the competition is the better it is in general for the for the overall ecosystem uh, right today uh, while we at moj are at the forefront of you know what we want to do from a short form video perspective it's great to have some of our other peers actually now starting to talk about uh, short form video a little more seriously because ultimately what we do what we do want advertisers to realize is that uh they need to figure out a way of communicating their story in a shorter span uh right if audiences in this country are actually consuming content that's 15 to 20 seconds long it's very tough for or it's going to be very tough for a brand to actually uh be able to engage with the same audience by showing them a 60 second creative right and for us at moj and i assume the same applies for our peers who are trying to now uh push the short form narrative in the market uh it's basically trying to make brands understand that you can actually tell your story within a shorter time time frame and in fact you should try to do that because that's what the consumers are wanting today right um uh, they want the they want the ads to be crisp they want the ads to be uh more contextual I, i i talked about that earlier where you know we are we are bringing in the finer nuances of a particular region or a particular language or a particular culture to it and that's something that we do quite well right so so while competition is good we have also created our own niche we know what our strengths are um uh, and for us uh, you know given everything that we do is from a indian language perspective first we understand the nuances of those so even the 
creator ecosystem that we have built for ShareChat and Moj, that creator ecosystem also you would realize is somewhat different from what some of the other players would be doing, right? And that creator ecosystem can actually add a lot of value to, to any brand that's looking to talk to people in a Meerut, in a Bulanshair, in a in a Udupi, right? So, so if you have to actually go to those towns and cities of the country, you will need to speak their language and who better to do it than the influencer who's actually sitting out there, right? And actually speaking the language, understands the local culture. I would say not just local culture, but local micro culture, right? Because every town and city, as you would also uh, agree, in, in a country like ours, the culture shifts, right? Like as they say, like in South, every hundred kilometers, the, the, the taste of somewhere changes, right? Similarly, culture also changes in our in our country. So every pocket has a microculture and a platform like, like ours understands that microculture really quite well. Uh, and that sort of helps us uniquely differentiate our platform from everything else that's out there. Sudhit, how many advertisers are you currently working with? So... In the period of, uh, if you were to just take the second half of last year, so I'm talking from uh, July to uh, December, we had close to, actually we had 200 plus advertisers who actually work with us on Moj itself. And if I were to take that number, if I were to add share chat to it, that number will go upwards of 350, right? So we have a sizable chunk of advertisers who are actually working very closely, very regularly with us. The more interesting thing, uh, Kanchan, is that, uh, these are not just one-off associations that we have with advertisers. Uh, quite a few of our advertisers are actually doing repeat business with us. They are they are very consistent on the platform. You would actually see uh, the likes of Pepsi, Coke, Amazon, uh, right? All these advertisers we work very closely with. The other interesting thing is that uh, we work with advertisers from across industry verticals, right? A lot of people have asked me th this question earlier that, hey, uh, is your platform suitable for only new age advertisers? Is it suitable for startups? Is it suitable for tech companies? Is it suitable for FMCG? And what's truly astonishing is that uh, we are not really limited to one or two verticals, but organizations from across different industry verticals are actually working very closely with us. They have figured out their own unique ways of working with us. In fact, the strength of the platform also lies in the in the fact that we don't offer just vanilla video display sort of options. Uh, given that we are an India-based organization, so we can actually do a lot more innovation around our ad units. And that's why we are able to offer a whole wide range of uh, options to advertisers. And depending on you know, what your campaign objective is, what your industry is, uh, uh, what kind of innovation you're looking for, what kind of TG you're going after, we can actually do a lot of customization uh, in, in the plans that we make for, for brands. And that's why you would see that uh, advertisers from across verticals, from FMCG to handsets, uh, to e-commerce players, uh, fintech, right? All verticals you would actually see uh, live on the platform in some shape or form. Mm -hmm. This is really interesting. And, and I mainly ask this question because uh, advertising market has not been so good globally. So hmm. how has been the ad market for you, you know, over the past one year in terms of revenue and hmm. what are your expectations for the current fiscal? Hmm. So uh, look, it is true. There have been definitely headwinds, right? Uh, I, I think across the board, uh, due to macro factors, advertisers have definitely, uh, re they're definitely reevaluating the, their budgets and they're trying to figure what is the best ROI that, uh, that they can generate from their ad dollars. The good thing about platforms like ours is that given the fact that we are actually able to make a material difference and we are actually able to deliver better ROIs. So we continue to, 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 to be present in the, in the marketing plans, uh, of, of almost all the advertisers that we work with. Uh, and that's exactly the reason why we have actually managed to do what we have managed to do in the last year, right? Uh, growing our revenues almost 2x of where we were in, in June of 22 over a period of six months. That's sort of a testament to how the platform is actually able to deliver for uh, for advertisers across categories, right? Uh, so I'm not uh, completely writing off the headwinds that we have, but at the same time, all the work that's going on on the product, on the platform, uh, uh, 
you know uh, that has really helped us to actually uh, not only continue to engage uh, with the existing set of advertisers but actually unlock a lot of new advertisers on the platform as well and you know as far as uh, the current year is concerned we definitely see a huge uh, upside for us uh, i think some good groundwork has been done uh, in the last uh, uh, last few months uh, we have actually done long term deals with quite a few advertisers uh, and that sort of gives us the confidence that we would be able to go uh, further higher up uh, in terms of our our revenue trajectory in the next uh, uh, six months pudit would you like to name those or advertisers with whom uh, you you done the long term deal uh sorry i'm not at liberty to actually talk about the names uh, no kanchan no problem, no problem. Yeah. can you hear me the, yeah yeah how has been the response you know after moj and max takatak merger i think that merger was the largest in the history of uh, uh, you know merger that happened sorry can you hear me yeah i think maybe there's a little bit of a lag but but i i heard your question uh, kanchan your question was around the moj takatak uh, merger right yeah. i think what that merger has done is uh, obviously it was one of the largest mergers probably in the history of uh, uh, you know mergers that have happened in the social media space uh, what it did did was uh it actually sort of consolidated the the viewer base that was going after short form video uh on one platform right so so for us uh, i think it was it was uh, a pretty positive move uh to be able to now uh become the undisputed leader in the in the short form video video space right that's what, that's exactly what that merger has essentially delivered for us okay now my last question i mean what are your plans for expansion you know in terms of staff in terms of new features and maybe new acquisitions so new acquisitions i would leave to our cfo to answer that question but i can talk to you about how we are looking at uh, expansion in general from a revenue perspective look i think one thing is uh, very clear to us that uh, while we continue to work with the larger advertisers in this country and continue to scale business on that side we are also uh very serious about expanding our footprint in terms of the number of advertisers that we want to bring on board because we do believe like i said uh given the the wide range of options that are available on the platform and given our ability to actually uh deliver for the smallest of budgets to the largest of budgets we don't want any advertiser to be left out of of our sort of ecosystem and that's why one of the big focus areas for us this year is to essentially expand our footprint uh in what we call as the mid market segment right so we are SMB? essentially going after smb uh, not say? smbs as well so smbs as well as uh, these would be the mid tier sort of advertisers right um so there is there is a top 200 advertisers that that we work very closely with now we are actually this year focused on expanding that base to the next 2000 advertisers and of course we continue to cater to the smbs as well because we have a self serve platform through which a lot of small advertisers uh you know uh proprietorships uh those sort of uh, organizations are actually able to run campaigns on on both share chat and moj so so that is one uh, primary thing that we are we are looking to do this year apart from that uh, you know one of the other big differentiators for us is our ability to uh work with the influencer creator community that we have and be able to do very interesting hashtag challenges influencer activations right uh, that's something that again is 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 uh, you know unique to our platform and that's something that we also want to scale further so i think in last year was sort of a uh, a pmf establishment for us now now that we have actually done it and now that we have uh, advertisers who have a uh, trust in our ability to actually deliver roi on those uh, those campaigns we are now trying to scale up the entire uh, content revenue uh, stream for us as well so i would say that uh, you know those are the two sort of big uh, uh, streams that we would be working working on in in this current in the current year thank you so much udit thank you so much for taking time out and speaking with you for him thank you thank you so much kanchan really nice talking to you Thank you.